Now that you're able to calculate a goal TPN prescription, this Med Mastery lesson will focus on how to start and advance someone on TPN. The first thing to know is that when you're starting a patient on TPN, they'll be on a continuous infusion schedule. This means that they'll be receiving TPN continuously, with one bag lasting 24 hours and then being replaced with a new one. This means that our TPN formulation can be customized daily. This may sound frequent, but carefully consider any changes to the formulation as the patient will be receiving that same formulation for a full 24 hours. So where do we start? Just like tube feeds, we won't be starting out at our goal order. And FYI, when I say goal, I'm referring to macronutrients, specifically dextrose. The reason for this is to prevent complications from refeeding syndrome, which is only associated with dextrose. This can occur even in patients not initially identified as high risk. TPN should be started with a low amount of dextrose and slowly advance to goal while monitoring tolerance. The higher the risk for refeeding syndrome, the longer it may take to reach goal TPN. Let's talk details. You'll typically start your patient out with half goal dextrose in their day one TPN. It's fine to start out at goal protein and goal IV lipids on day one since they're not associated with refeeding syndrome and this helps increase the total calories provided by the solution. After day one, your patient's TPN advancement trajectory will go one of two ways. The first way is if your patient's electrolytes and blood glucose are stable on day two. In this case, you can advance dextrose to goal, meaning your patient will be receiving 100% of their goal macronutrients. The second way is if your patient shows any major electrolyte or blood glucose disturbances. In this case, you'll want to work on correcting those prior to advancing the dextrose. As their electrolytes and blood glucose are corrected, you'll slowly advance TPN to goal. For example, you might advance to three quarters goal dextrose on day two and to goal on day three. Or if the electrolyte and blood glucose disturbances are significant enough, you might keep dextrose at half goal on day two before starting to advance. Just always keep in mind that advancing TPN too quickly can exacerbate the effects of refeeding syndrome. If you suspect that a patient is at risk for refeeding syndrome, add an extra dose of 200 to 300 milligrams of thiamine with or without folic acid to the TPN bag for five to seven days. As previously discussed, Thiamine helps with carbohydrate metabolism, and patients at risk for refeeding syndrome often have low levels of thiamine. Next, while a patient is on TPN, what needs to be monitored? Firstly, when starting out, check routine labs with magnesium and phosphorus at least daily. For patients who are exhibiting signs of refeeding syndrome, you may need to check electrolytes more frequently, such as twice or three times daily. If a patient has been stable at their goal TPN for a week or so without needing electrolyte replenishment, then labs could be checked every two to three days. Secondly, you should check point-of-care blood glucose every six hours and start sliding scale regular insulin coverage to control blood glucose levels. If your patient is in the ICU and blood glucose is very high and hard to get under control, they may need a regular insulin drip. Once a patient has been stable on their goal TPN for at least a week with normal blood glucose levels not requiring any insulin, then sometimes the regular blood glucose checks and sliding scale insulin will be stopped. The third thing to check is a triglyceride level prior to starting IV lipids. If triglycerides are less than 300 milligrams per deciliter, lipids can be initiated. If they're over 300, do not start lipids yet and recheck the lab in the next 24 to 48 hours. After IV lipids are initiated, you'll check your patient's triglycerides weekly to make sure they remain under 400. If they become elevated, IV lipids should be stopped for a few days and the level rechecked. Finally, let's talk briefly about PPN. Since PPN doesn't meet 100% of a patient's needs, it's unlikely there will be much to do in terms of advancement. Typically, the starting dose is the maximum dose, and if macronutrient advancement is necessary, conversion from PPN to TPN will be required. So I hope you liked this video. 
absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.